Today on Monkey Life. Ten new ugly monkeys are given a new home. A lot of hard work has gone in to make these ten stump tails a good retirement home. A worrying operation for chimp Athena. Something's poked in the eye and it's showing no signs of healing and she's doing this all the time. And a sticky surprise for Hanaki's gun. This is Monkey World in Dorset. It's home to more than 240 monkeys and apes and is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. Dr. Alison Cronin and her team dedicate their lives to rescuing and rehabilitating primates from all over the world. They're all going to have a chance to live proper lives again. Perfect. As the residents of the park enjoy an early breakfast, workers are busy putting the final touches to a new stumpy house. Because today, there are going to be 10 new arrivals. The six existing stump-tailed macaques are going to be joined by another group, who are being retired from a laboratory in Scotland. And Alison is on her way to pick them up. Today's the day for our 10 new stumptail macaques, so I'm um, really excited, actually. Wilmot and the other ugly monkeys, as they're affectionately known, have lived in the lab facility, owned by the Medical Research Council, for more than 20 years. They were used in reproductive studies. We have so many different individuals at the park, but nonetheless, every time you go out and meet somebody new, and in this case, 10 new people, their little needs and eccentricities and who's grumpy and who's not, you know, it's just really special. We've built them up, a purpose-built building at the park just to meet their needs and hopefully, you know, we'll be able to provide them with a more natural environment so that Wilmot and all of the ladies can um, sort of have a good, you know, feed up retirement and be able to exhibit all of that natural behavior that's tucked away inside that hasn't been able to come out yet. Like all new residents, the Stumpies will have a health check once they arrive at the park. Can you see your belly? The care staff keep a close eye on all the primates to make sure they're not suffering from any illnesses or discomfort. Recently, they've noticed that Athena, a chimp in Paddy's group, has been having a problem with one of her eyes, which she's been rubbing constantly. Everyone's got a soft spot for her and we're obviously worried about what's going on and it's distressing to see her so uncomfortable um, and really not being able to do anything to relieve that discomfort. So we really need to see what's going on and get to the bottom of the problem so that we can, we can you know, make it better for her. So the veterinary team, headed up by the park's vet, Mike Nathan, have decided to anaesthetise Athena and take a closer look. Once she's asleep, animal director Jeremy carries her into the chimp's bedroom. No. You which way round, I wonder? They've decided to carry out the procedure here rather than the hospital to minimise any stress and reduce the amount of time she's asleep. It's very unusual for chimps to show they're in pain because in the wild, this would be seen as a sign of weakness and would make them vulnerable. Mike is concerned Athena could lose the sight in her eye if he doesn't get to the bottom of the problem. I'm looking to see and I've found that she's got an ulcer on her eye. I'm now caught, what I'm doing is debriding the edge of it. That take, means taking off the edge with a sterile swab. I can't see what's caused it. It's not a horrible one, but it's obviously been very painful. Mike applies a green dye, so the ulcer is visible to the team. It's on the cornea itself. See that area there, that shining green? That green is the The green is the dye, the around. fluorescein dye. Which shows it up. Which shows it up, and I've just rubbed the edge of that, because it was, there was an, you can see an edge yeah, right here. Yeah, I can here, see that, I can see that. Right, all the way there. Breathing OK, Penny? Yes, it is, it's fine. Unfortunately, what's happened is something's poked in the eye, 
and it's showing no signs of healing at the moment. Normally, if there's signs of healing with a deep ulcer, you'll see blood vessels coming from the edge of the eye across to it. There's nothing like that visible. It's actually not a particularly deep ulcer, but it's not showing any signs of healing, and she's doing this all the time. Normally, you'd put in antibiotic drops on a regular basis, which I haven't a hope of doing. I'm gonna give her an injection under her eyelid now. Athena will be in a lot of pain when she wakes up from the operation, so Mike covers her eye with anaesthetic gel to ease the discomfort. This gives you the most intense relief. That lasts for about an hour maximum, but I can't do any more than that. We've ruled out there's nothing horrible happening in the eye, apart from a lot of pain from an ulcer. Anybody who's had anything superficially on the eye will know it's intensely painful. And unfortunately, you can't stop her rubbing it because she can use her hands. If this is a, a dog or cat, in theory, you could put them in a collar. In a human, you tell them, thou shalt not. But you can't do that to her. Now the team have an anxious wait for Athena to come round from the anaesthetic. As well as regular health checks, staff are keen to make sure all the primates eat well and have a balanced diet. At the squirrel monkey enclosure, latest edition Fidget, along with the four females Alien, Samantha, Topsy and Turvy are awaiting some tasty treats. Today we're just putting some um, baskets up with some brows in and um, it's actually cherry brows so it's got the fresh cherries on it um, but we're also putting a few bits of extra yummy food in as well for the ones that don't really like the cherries so that they've got something. The staff try to ensure their food is as similar as possible to that which they would find in the wild. For these guys, that includes insects, grubs and fruit. It doesn't take long for the group leader to get stuck in. We first have Alien here at the moment. She's always first on scene, uh, mostly because she's dominant, but also because she's very greedy as well. So she always wants to be first to investigate anything. Well done, Alien. The staff bury the food in the brows to help encourage their foraging instincts. It just means that they have to work it so they can get the food out and the holes are quite small as well um, so it just means that it will take them a little bit longer to figure it out. Fidget has been at the park for three months now and is getting on well with the ladies but is still a bit unsure of his position in the group. The others are all mingling around. Fidget's quite low in the hierarchy so he'll probably wait towards the end. But while the others get in a bit of a spin or make a song and dance about it, Fidget quietly nips in. Hi, Fidget. There's Cherry there, just for you. Alison has arrived at the lab in Scotland, where the Stumpies are being carefully packed into travelling crates for their journey back to the park. The guys are um, starting to box them up, so we've already got three or four ladies into the boxes. They'll be transported by van to Edinburgh Airport and then loaded onto a flight to Southampton. These guys have never been outside before, so this is a big adventure, yes. but also a potentially dangerous one, because some of these stumpies are fairly old and rather frail. Ugly monkeys aren't as light as they look, on average, they each weigh about 15 kilos, although Wilmot, the only male in the group, is 20 kilos. Do you know what? These guys have been absolutely brilliant. All 10 monkeys boxed up, no stress, not even a little whoa in the process. Nobody's upset. Look, we've got Miriam right here tootling about. They've had breakfast in there, and you don't sit down and tuck into your breakfast if you're feeling too bothered. See you guys later. Alison has spent weeks trying to make sure everything runs smoothly. The most important thing is that the monkeys are kept as calm as possible on the flight. Alison checks each of the boxes before they're loaded onto the plane. Hello, Cola. You're a good girl. 
So, everybody's really fantastic. I'm really surprised, just done a quick survey around and even with all of the noise, they're all just sitting and actually up towards the front, looking back at you. I think we just have to get the passenger bags loaded on, then the monkeys go on so that they're the first off. And Wilmot, I've already discussed it with the guys, the guys asked, Wilmot gets his position right by the door so that he's the first one off because his box is heavier and they don't want to hurt their backs. It's a worrying time for Alison, who knows some of the elderly Stumpies may struggle with the flight. One left to go and that's Wilmot. So yeah, nine down, one to go and here he comes. Wakey, wakey. Come on. Athena still hasn't woken after the operation to remove an ulcer on her eye. We do like you to wake up. It's best if you wake up. Just right now, it's good if you wake up. When she finally stirs, Jeremy leaves her to come round on her own. She's a strong chimp and could easily overpower him. Really, now we've just got to keep her antibiotic going and her pain relief going, and time will be the healer. What happens with these ulcers is you take the edge off um, the cornea, just imagine it like a little crater in there, but it's not... And you get rid of that, and it'll heal fine. Other times, it, you have to keep doing it. I just hope that this will do in one go, and you know, if we give her a few hours of her stopping rubbing her eyes, it might make a hell of a difference. It'll be a couple of weeks before the team know whether the procedure has been successful. But so far, it's all gone well. Meanwhile, over at Hananya's enclosure, the chimps there are about to have a sticky surprise. We've got some very large plastic tubs full with jelly um, and we've put them all around the enclosure, some on the high platform, some on the low. We've also got some big plastic tubs of ice lollies full to the brim. But it's not just jelly and ice on offer. We've put a hammock in the outside of Penanias with some of these play balls in, um, but inside some of them we've injected some juice and some uh, yoghurt which we've put in the fridge. We've also got some with a little bit of jelly inside, so obviously they'll have to find the ones that have the goodies in. First out is Simon, who heads straight for a large bucket of jelly. <laughs> Leader Hananya can't decide whether to eat it or sit in it. But it's his stomach that wins the day. All the group are very excited. As Hananya climbs onto the platform, first Valerie and then Cherry show respect to their boss before they all dig in. Low-ranking Arthur hones in on an unoccupied bucket, but keeps an eye out in case one of the higher rankers decide they want it. Marjolene isn't sure about the jelly, but quite likes the watermelon. The primate care staff are constantly coming up with new challenges for the chimps to keep them stimulated. In the wild, not only do they have to find different food sources, they have to work out how best to get at them. So, although this is a nice treat for the group, there is a purpose to it. Shamak is finding it difficult to get to the melons, but he's a clever chimp and knows he has to break the ice. His perseverance eventually pays off, and he grabs the whole haul for himself. Cookie is really using her brains. Instead of getting all sticky, she makes herself a spoon out of the pineapple leaves. Peggy has been particularly clever. She's found another way of enjoying the treats without getting messy. Hananya's intrigued. As alpha male, he could demand the bottle, but he's sensible enough to keep his ladies on side and lets dominant female Peggy enjoy it in peace. Simon, on the other hand, isn't having quite as much success. Zeynep has found the hammock of fruit balls. Like many primates, chimps have opposable thumbs, 
meaning they can grasp and manipulate objects easily. She's an intelligent chimp and makes light work of untying the knot. It's been quite a day. And with all the jelly and fruit gone, Simon and the others decide it's time for a bit of shut-eye. Three months ago, woolly monkey Paquita gave birth to a baby daughter. And the staff have finally decided on a name. They couldn't choose one immediately because they weren't sure what sex the baby was. And they also wanted to get to know her personality. It took a while to decide on the baby's name. We all discussed it between ourselves and had lots of suggestions, but we've decided to call her Isla, which means moonlight. And seeing as we discovered her while it was still dark, it seemed quite fitting. She's quite a precocious little baby, so she takes after her mum. She's bang on target for all of her little development milestones, so even though she's still really, really tiny, she's actually started to climb quite confidently. She's moving around a little bit on her own, but Paquita always stays close to make sure that she's okay. The groups accepted her really, really well. On day one, uh, Julio and Diego actually went up to her and greeted her, which was really amazing to see. Um, the males, like they should do, are staying out the way, trying not to be too annoying to Paquita because it's their role to stay back, make sure everything's safe and not interfere. Paquita lost her baby son Raul last year when he fell and suffered a head injury. It was a tragic accident, which the staff are determined to make sure won't happen again. We've tried to make the Woolly House as safe as possible, so as well as keeping it fun and practical for them, um, we've added a few extra bits and bobs, so we've got a great big cargo net up in the rafters, just in case anybody happens to lose their footing, they can catch themselves in that. And we've covered the whole of the floor of the uh, enclosure in a big thick layer of uh, bark chip, so it's nice and spongy should anybody happen to fall off of anything. We're hoping things are going to continue to go well because Paquita had a rough time losing Raul and this time things are looking really positive so we've all got our fingers crossed. Alison and the stump-tailed macaques have landed at Southampton Airport. She's desperate to make sure the monkeys are all okay. Can I just have a look over your shoulder, mate? Yeah, fantastic. All of the boxes are in perfect nick. Um, smells a bit macaque in there, but yeah, we're good. The crates are carefully loaded into a van for the last leg of the journey to the park. This part of the operation can't be rushed, as the stumpies need to be kept as calm as possible. It's off down to the new life, um, so it'll be good to get them settled into the park and everybody to bed, but they're looking fantastic. At the park, a welcoming committee has gathered, keen to catch a glimpse of the new arrivals and get them settled in the brand new stumpy house that's been built especially for them. Seven hours after leaving the lab in Scotland, the stumpies finally arrive at their new home. Everyone is keen to get them out of the crates as soon as possible. For Alison, it's a huge relief. This has taken a huge amount of work and planning. You know, the lab supported us in building this building so that the Stumptails had a good retirement home. George and the maintenance team have killed themselves getting this house up and right. The primate care staff have kitted it out just lovely. Wilmot, the only male, is released first. Good boy. It's OK, take it easy, mate. Closely followed by the nine ladies. <laughs> It'll take a while for them to adjust to their new surroundings, but the first signs are positive. In Scotland, these monkeys were confined indoors, but in the coming weeks, they'll be allowed outside for the first time in their lives. And it's not just the monkeys trying to familiarize themselves. The primate care staff too have a lot of new faces to get to know. 
The long journey certainly hasn't put 25-year-old Miriam off her food. Until now, these stumpies have only ever lived in very small groups. The team hope eventually they'll all be happy to live together, along with the park's other set of ugly monkeys. But that process will have to happen gradually. We've got everybody bedded down separate, bar the three older ladies. We've left them together in the big playroom and then everybody else is individually side by side. But already tonight, I mean, in it, you can't judge anything in the first five minutes, but already tonight, ladies who haven't been housed together are alongside the mesh saying hello, reaching out, touching each other. It's all good signs so far. The macaques were looked after by a veterinary team in Scotland. But only time will tell what effect years of living in the confines of a medical research facility will have had on these monkeys. It's been a huge success and I'm just over the moon and really proud of everybody here. And the Stumpies, of course, they're just fantastic. We all love them to bits, you know. Ugly and proud. Next time on Monkey Life, the Stumpy ladies vie for position of top dog. <laughs> It looks sort of bad when one individual gets chased down and grabbed, but then just as quickly somebody else will jump in and have a go at the aggressor. And there's excitement at the park as two new arrivals head in from Switzerland. As of this year, there's only 47 woolly monkeys left in the breeding programme. Another two joining the fold is a brilliant event for us.